Ladies and gentlemen, brace yourselves for the 360 camera battle of the century! In corner number one, we have the underdog, the camera whose name nobody can pronounce. It is the Xiaomi Mijian Mi Sphere. In corner number two, we have everything epic in one, weighing in at $300, the Insta360 One! In corner number three, it's the new kid on the block, weighing in at just over $400. Everybody knows and loves Rico, but is there a camera good enough to compete with these two? It is the Theta V! Alright, now that's out of the way, here are the prices. And here are the resolutions. Two of them are 4K, one is 3.5K. I've upscaled the Xiaomi footage to 4K, and to be honest, I can barely notice any difference. They all look the same in terms of resolution and sharpness. These are the three most talked about 360 cameras right now. The cameras people are most buying and wanting to buy, and a lot of people have been asking me, Ben, which is the best of these three? Which one should I buy? So in this video, I'll put the footage from each side by side in many different situations. Looking at this very first one here on this basketball court, I'm actually not noticing a massive difference. This is supposed to be the epic showdown of the century, yet they're all on a level playing field from situation number one. Bam! Location change. And here we have a controlled lighting situation, a little bit of indoor-outdoor action, and again, they are looking identical. I can barely spot a difference between all three of these. I'm actually in shock at how similar these look. These are three very different cameras from three very different companies, yet they're delivering the exact same result in this situation. Yeah, you could probably argue maybe little spots of the image are different, but overall, there isn't a big enough difference to say one is better than the other. Another location change, another similar result. All three of these look the same, yet again, completely different location, yet you can barely tell which camera is which. Okay, let's test out the stitching, surely there will be a difference here. Firstly, let's try a shot where I'm about two feet from the camera, and I do want to point out that I wasn't actually having fun here, I'm far too mature for that, I was just pretending I was having fun. And they're all stitching quite well. Something that draws my attention is the Insta361. On one lens, it seems to have fogged up, I'm not sure whether this is a smart or to do with the stitching. Regardless, I am seeing a visible seam line there, even from two feet away. Now I'm going to get uncomfortably close to the Theta V to see how good the stitching really is. It is quite a thin camera, so you can get quite close. My nose is now touching the camera, and a little bit of my face is getting cut off, but not a huge amount. A lot of you guys pointed out how good the stitching was in my Theta V test footage video, and I agree, this is gonna be one of the best features of the Theta. Moving over to the Xiaomi, and it's a similar story. Because the lenses are so close together, the stitching error is going to be very minimal. My nose is touching the camera there, and again, minimal cutoff. This has always been a great camera for stitching for me, and you can trust it to do a good job. Last, we have the Insta360 camera, and I'm still one foot away from the camera now, and I'm getting cut off already. When I get closer, I look more and more like a mutant. But I have found the stitching has been the least impressive of all three cameras with the Insta360 one. In their app, they have a feature called stitching optimization. I've turned it on and off here to try and find the best result, but still it's producing a less than desirable stitch. If you can stay away from the seam line, this won't be an issue. However, you will need to be mindful of it unless you dig the mutant look. Oh, and remember when I said all three cameras look exactly the same? Well, I lied. They almost couldn't look any more different. Here I have the footage straight out of the camera and you can see they look completely different. The one has a distinct purple tone. The Xiaomi has really strong contrast and really dark blacks. And the Theta V is pretty well balanced all around. But Mr. Ben, why would you lie to me like that? I thought we were friends. I hear you ask. Well, there's a reason for that. The footage you're looking at right now is footage straight out of the camera, untouched. When I do a color grade to all three, in the vast majority of situations, I'm able to transform these three very different looks into the same look. This is a testament to how excellent the dynamic range is on all three cameras. In front of you, you have three very different color palettes, yet they can all act like chameleons and take on a completely different look without it looking too unnatural. This location has an extremely high amount of contrast, yet I was able to color grade all three videos in a way that they look quite 
quite similar with a decent amount of dynamic range. The shadows are visible, the highlights are even. Yes, there are slightly different tones in the mid-tones, but otherwise all three of these are very acceptable and I wouldn't mind putting my name to any of them. So Mr. Ben, you're saying that they're all exactly the same. Then why the hell am I watching this stupid video? I hear you ask. Let's take a look at some more differences, shall we? Going for a stroll with all three cameras and instantly I'm admiring the amazing 6-axis stabilization of the Xiaomi and the Insta360 One. The buttery smoothness they both produce means you can shake your camera around, you can have it handheld, you can attach it to things and you don't need to worry too much about camera shake. Yes, there are very minimal shakes present but overall it's a really smooth ride. The Theta V has improved stabilization and it's not too bad here but I'm not shaking the camera a massive amount. When you do start shaking it, tilting it, moving it in every direction, you're going to notice that the Theta V just won't handle it as well as the other two cameras. So ultimately, you need to ask yourself, how much handheld 360 video will I be shooting? If you do a lot, go for the One or the Xiaomi. If you prefer to keep your camera on a tripod, you might want to consider the Theta V for many other reasons. One area the Theta V shines is low light. This footage was shot just after sundown, and I'm seeing the most amount of clarity from the Theta V, the best overall dynamic range. When I look at the Insta360 One, the colors aren't looking as nice. The dynamic range is good, but it's not as good as the other two. Also, there's the most amount of grain in the Insta360 footage. So let's just say that nighttime isn't its strong point. It does have many strong points, but at nighttime, expect less than perfect results. For me, the red W in this example is what sets them apart. The Theta V has it really sharp and vivid, whereas the other two, and this is after a color grade, are still looking washed out and a little bit blown out as well. So I think I can safely say the Theta V will be the best camera to shoot with at night time because of that amazing dynamic range. I also want to point out that all three of these cameras are capable of long exposures at night time which means you can get a really good exposure and minimal grain. You can do cool stuff like light paintings and they're all going to be good for photo at night time. It's just video that you're going to see the biggest difference in exposure. Finally, I'll end it with some photo samples and these are three cameras I really love shooting photo with. I haven't had an issue with any of them. Yeah, there are some minor things and you should check out my reviews if you want more info about the photos. I already have my Xiaomi review out and I'll have a review of the Theta V and the Insta360 within the next week or so. Also, I'm gonna put links in the description to where you can get these cameras the cheapest. Two of them are on Amazon, the Theta V and the Insta360 One. With the Xiaomi, you'll have to go to gearbest.com where it's on sale all the time. But really, I've gotta say, I can endorse all three of these cameras. They've all done a good job for both photo and video so far. I will be using all three of them a lot with my content creation for Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. They all do an exceptional job for such a low price point and I would even say they over deliver. So figuring out which one is best for you, I would strongly suggest going over my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash life in 360 photo and having a look at the sample footage and the other videos I've made with each of these cameras because I think those will really help you make a decision. Also head over to Instagram, I'm at Ben Claremont. I've made tiny planets with all three of these cameras and again, they're all great at tiny planets. Finally, over at facebook.com slash life in 360 photo, you'll be able to see even more samples, including the photo you're looking at right now. I have all three of them side by side, so you can look with more resolution and more clarity. You'll definitely wanna check out our Facebook page because we've got heaps of awesome stuff coming out there every single day. All right, guys, that's it from me. Be keen to hear your thoughts about which of these cameras you like the best, as well as any questions you have. Feel free to leave them in the box below and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, peace out and I'll talk to you very, very soon.